Hello and welcome. This is S tier rank. Today I'm going to be playing some more inscription Casey's mod. And um, let's see, we'll go ahead and get us a new run started. And today I think I'd like to play with this insect based deck. And we need to try to get 40 points for our next challenge. So that's pretty hard hitting. Um, let's see, we could do all totem battles to get us 20. And um, tip scales will get us the rest of the way. Or we could do some combination of these other things um, to help us get there more easily. Um, I'm thinking boss totems since those are mm -mm, all regular battles. So basically all battles will be totem. Then we could add one more thing and we would be good. I'm going to go with no clover since that hits our minimum and we will run with it. Okay, let's see what we have here. We have an ant queen, flying ant, which is new, and um, a skunk. So, interesting set of cards. Let's see what we can get in our trade real quick. I'm going to get another flying ant, and let's get a bat. So we'll have something that consumes bone. Oh good, we got lucky and we have an insect head right off the bat. So maybe we'll get us a good sigil. Okay, a uh, mighty leap card on the totem there. So, a wild bull is incoming too. Interesting. Hmm. I feel like waiting a turn and then playing the ant queen, but maybe we can instead play our flying ant and get the ant queen here in another turn or two. I think of that bull is going to get in our way and take out our uh, guy as it is so i could get the ant queen on the board though and kind of hate to use a squirrel that quickly but with our uh, initial items it's not a huge deal so we'll get rid of our wild bull and uh, that'll be it okay good we can get our worker ant on the board and that'll be nine damage in one turn Look at all those excess teeth. It's beautiful. I think we may actually have enough to get a wolf pelt too with our regular prices here. Or maybe even a golden pelt. Wow. Nice. I didn't expect to get one that quickly. Feel good. Alright, time to power something up. Thinking perhaps on the flying ants. We'll just back away from that because three health is good enough for me. Okay. Every fight's going to be a totem fight, so we'll just have to keep with it, see how it goes. A raven egg. And it's going to be moving around. So I think putting something here makes the most sense. However, we only have an airborne flying ant, so maybe we could have it chipping away somewhere else where it won't get hurt. Um, skunk is stinky, but I don't think that'll help a lot. So we'll just put the ant there to chip away at the fur for a turn or two. Oh, and we have an incoming alpha as well. Hmm. And another flying ant. So let's see. I think we're just gonna have to keep going with this and see where we end up. Maybe I can pull the alpha over to my side. 
can't get a flying ant that'll improve our um, overall damage though. The alpha is going to do a big hit though. So they're going to get plus three and I'm only going to get plus two which will bring us down overall by one. But I can block the um, alpha's hit with our golden pelt. Um, and that would be fine, I believe. All right, good. Okay, let's see what we get out of this ant. Ant queen. I don't even know if it's worth it. So if we do another round of damage, um, we'll be saving that raven egg come up. Yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and take it, just in case. Because I'm not exactly sure why he conceded that. It still felt like they had the uh, opportunity there to win. Oh, hey, Wizard Max. Good to see you again. Just getting started on uh, this hard run. There's 40 points at stake on this one. We're doing all bosses and all normal battles are totem-based and also included no clover um, to get me 40 points. So it's going to be a, a big fight, I think. Yeah, it's going to be hard. I'm using this uh, ant deck that gives me a flying ant, an ant queen, and a skunk to start off to. And so far, it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, let's see. Let's head to the woodcarver. Okay. I will say perhaps the pronghorn is good. Yep, yep, that's the one I unlocked in the uh, win from yesterday, so I'm really excited to be using it. Ooh, worthy sacrifice. I think it will go with that. You can sacrifice a single insect and get three blood out of it, so that's pretty excellent. Alright, raven egg and a snowy fur. And this one has guard dog on it too. Hmm. I could put a skunk down and uh, slow down our raven egg. We'll get a pronghorn soon enough. I can take it on. Unfortunately, we're about to have a wolf that jumps in front of us, so we'll do a block that way. And next turn, hopefully, we'll have enough to get our pronghorn going. Okay, and I want to put the pronghorn, let's see, I think I may need to go ahead and pull a tooth, so we'll do that. And the pronghorn needs to go somewhere clever. Um, I feel like if I put it here, the raven may move closer, and then we'll have attack permit and the wolf cub coming, but it would block this other raven egg, so maybe it'll work out is fine. Okay. And we'll continue forward. Ponghorn's going to move around anyways. So it should be able to take out the wolf cub. Uh, I believe that the totems, we still only have one totem each. and uh, But just all the fights are going to include a totem. Um... So yeah, it's definitely tricky, and already I'm struggling with even the early fights being able to keep up. <laughs> like they're they're definitely challenging me. Let's see. Thinking about sacrificing the skunk stinky to put on someone like the pronghorn, so it can last a little bit longer. Yeah, it's been a challenging fight. I've really liked it. Oh. Now we got field mice we could sacrifice and get fecundity to put on something else. Um, that would be nice to have. So what about having it on, say, another flying ant that's already been powered up? That would be cool. All right. About to get us possibly another strong flying ant. 
let's see. Ah, it only gave us these three as our choice. So, Pronghorn would be getting more powerful, more worth the money, or I could have a skunk start contributing to fights. Um, I think I'll go with the Pronghorn since overall it's more damage on the board. Plus two instead of just plus one. And we'll go ahead and withdraw. Here we are in our first fight with the boss. It's kind of nice to get the trapper out of the way early on. Okay. Sure does seem to like our uh, airborne and mighty leap sigils. Here's a bullfrog. It's going to be airborne and mighty leap. That's pretty funny. Um, well, we could get the ant queen down by sacrificing flying ant and overall um, that might be an okay idea, but I kind of hate for these guys to stick around um, when I really don't have to deal with them. So let's just uh, put this over here and um, I mean they're going to attack me anyway, so let's see, because of the airborne, so I can't really block them per se. I don't even think rabbit pelt would do it, so hmm. I wonder if I need to pull them over. They'll get plus two, but I can get another flying ant next turn and perhaps withstand that. Okay. And get another flying ant down and that will take out both the strange frog and the bullfrog and overall they'll get well, actually it won't kill the bullfrog no it will because of the money leap um, I misspoke and the strange frog will get us down by one and from there we'll just have to see how it goes okay Let's draw it from here, and I think it may make sense to sacrifice our flying ant that's over here to attack a strange frog. Um, however, we're going to have enough on the board, we might as well let that trap expire. I'm afraid something else is going to come up, so I think I will get the ant queen started on the case. Um, Oh, I got enough blood. Oops, that's a mistake. I'm gonna have to play it, and it's not gonna go into a good place. Um, <laughs> well, I should have remembered that. That was a little bit unfortunate. Either way, we get a worker ant back on the board, and there's more power than there was before, so I guess we'll take it. Gotta watch all those details, they'll sneak up and get you. Skunk, stinky skunk. Um, I guess I don't really have anything to play it with, so we'll just uh, continue on. Oh, we have a bullfrog incoming. I need to block it off for a bit, so let's put our skunk down. That'll take away its ability to do damage to us. And another flying ant. Excellent. Um, so I won't be able to get it on the board until at least the next turn. And um, we will go ahead and do so, so we can get this rolling along a little bit more quickly. And I may just clear out their lane so we get four damage right off the bat. Because I think I'm going to have, looks like, five pelts. I believe he gives you one for the trading phase. get lucky here. Um, most of these look like things I'd want to clear out, so we'll take out this guy and this one for sure. And that flying ant, um, and or this river otter and the sparrow, they could go. I'm not too worried about these guys, so we'll just go ahead and clear up the lanes like I was mentioning. Kingfisher's going to be stuck here with my skunk, and I should be able to play something to take out that raven egg. Um, 
So we'll just go like that and um, looks like maybe next turn, well actually this one, we'll be able to get something going. Um, perhaps this card counter will be enough. Okay, let's uh, double check here. I think, I think this will be enough. Yep. Okay, we should make quick work of this. Get a lot of excess damage actually. We got a bat. So we could put it down and we had to sacrifice our skunk though. So is there something else that we could do that? Um, actually this guy can do it. And we're gonna get um, a lot of excess damage. Wow. So we only need one damage left. So that'd be effectively four plus four plus four, 12. So we're gonna get 11 teeth. <laughs> oh yeah. Gotta get those teeth. That's how we get power. <laughs> I feel like that was a, a lucky set there. This is such a powerful starting hand too with a flying ant. It's kind of crazy. Ooh, an Ouroboros. I think that we will go ahead and take it. Yes, please. And on to the next area. That was interesting text that said so many totems Woodcarver had been busy. I guess that was a reference to having um, totem fights and everything. Hmm, we could have a really strong skunk at this blocks a ton of damage. Um, tempted to get that over the others, but perhaps having the wild bull to complement our other two bloods would be better. Okay, um, we only have the hook left, so I think that I'll go for items instead of the woodcarver. And let's get, how about the boulder, and we'll get the fan. It's tempting to get it earlier, so definitely worth getting. Alright. Pronghorn and a mole. And it has guard dog on it. It only has three health, so we could park something in front of it. That would be excellent. And one attack power. So the skunk could do that work, but it's going to move on the next turn, so that's less than ideal. Um, we could get it on the board just to start, and then maybe we'll use the skunk as part of a sacrifice towards something stronger. Okay, um, still not much we can really do here, so we'll just keep going. Oops, we'll pull from here instead. All right, and we do have a flying ant that we could get going. I think that. We'll just uh, park it right here, and I don't think the mole will be able to block it, so that's nice. And uh, Alpha is going to power up the pronghorn, unfortunately. I'm tempted to put the boulder down, but I think we'll just keep going with it. Alright, what else can we do here? I guess we need to draw a card, and hmm, could get another flying ant down. Fortunately, I think we're just going to be at kind of an attack deficit for a while, and this will get us plus four, so that's good. However, I think putting down a pelt here while we wait the ability to play some of our other cards may make the most sense. Because that elk is going to do some damage. 
Okay. Got it. Yeah, this isn't so bad. Alright, should we duplicate something? Going back and forth between duplicating. There is a cave event, though. And possibly taking one of my sigils and moving it onto something else, like maybe putting the Ouroboroses on one of the flying ants so it continuously gets stronger since it's cheaper uh, to begin with. That sounds pretty tempting. Just trying to think of what would be, if anything, something worth duplicating, and I don't really see it, so I think I will go the sacrifice route because I can benefit from that really quickly. Okay, Ouroboros, and we will put it on, let's say, this flying ant. Hopefully it'll just continue to get stronger and stronger. Alright, pronghorn and a mole. What can we do? Can take the strength out of the pronghorn to start and have that last for a couple of turns. And we can put a pelt down, but we don't need to in this moment, so we'll just hold off. Okay. And let's start saving up for something that can attack on the board. We'll save up for our wild bull. All right. And our wild bull could come into play right away. Pronghorn's going to move over, though, after its attack. Um, and get some excess damage after... Well, I wouldn't get excess damage, but I would take out the pronghorn and the elk fawn would move forward. So there's that. I think that perhaps that'll work. It's fine. The mole is going to move, however, so... I want to play a bolder card to block some of that damage for when that happens. Okay. I'm doing well. How are you today? I got a Kennedy here too. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. If I do this... And I have zero attack power. Huh. I wonder if there has to be a queen on the board for it to work. I'm tempted to sacrifice the bull just to see. Oh, that's tough. Good to hear you're doing well. I think that I'm about to uh, lose this round, unfortunately, because I... Uh, Kind of gave him a little bit too much um, to attack me with here, but I really wanted to learn how these cards work, so um, we'll just have to see how it goes. <laughs> it's going to be close, but I don't think we'll be able to recover. I didn't know the flying ant um, could go down to zero like this. I could go ahead and pull one of their cards over, but kind of would like to save the hook for a boss fight, so we'll just let it go ahead and go the way it's going to go. Yeah, this is really hard. These uh, 40 points worth of challenges, um, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Alright, Kennedy again. I wonder if putting it on the Ant Queen may be a good move to go. And a Rabbit Warren. Let's see. Hmm. I could put it on the ant queen, and that would give me enough to generate the worker ant in the same turn after it's played. Alright, so we could combine some stuff up. Um, could have a flying ant with Kennedy with the 
undying. That's pretty unkillable. That's pretty awesome. Or we can combine up some bats to get a four and two bat. Um, I think I'll do that instead because since our ants, you know, empower each other, this might be the best way to go. Okay. Um, I think I'm happy with the sigil I have. I have a lot of teeth that I need to trade in. Um, and two pelts, so I could go ahead and go to the trader for that. Um, it's a hard choice though, because I see that's coming up. And I'd like to use the warren on use its sigil on say the ant queen so that I could spawn ants more readily. Huh. I think I'll go this way and we'll trade in the pelts we have and maybe we'll get something really good that will help me stay on track to win. Alright, Raven and Sparrows. Not off the bat. What can we do here? They have Mighty Leap as well. So they would take the hit of our ant, interestingly. Um, I almost have enough I could play our pronghorn, but it's not going to work out quite right. So, But it does do two damage, so getting that on the board would be enough to take out the sparrow in one turn and the raven in just two. Oh, that's tough. Hmm. I'm afraid to play this one since... Uh, we don't have any ants to uh, to help support it, you know. So I guess we could play the skunk and lessen the power of our raven here and continue on. Worst comes to worst, I'll pull one of the cards over to Arstad. and let's go ahead and get this guy on. And now we can get our other guy on, and that should be, I think, enough to kind of change things around a little bit for the better. Okay. And let's see, we're going to get two damage on the board overall, and we are also going to have some incoming damage. So I'm not sure I'll be able to win. This is a hard pick, so could having our pronghorn help us out? Um, I could sacrifice this flying ant and get the pronghorn on the board. And that would be plus three overall. Um, but then we're going to get one, two, three damage coming in. I mean... I think it'll be okay. So we'll break even, but then we'll do better after the pronghorn. Yep, moves along just like that. And I still may need to yank uh, the card over because we uh, just don't have enough on the board for me to feel comfortable because the uh, Pronghorn will take this guy out, but then the cuckoo will come in and start doing damage. So let's go ahead and yank the porcupine. And if we can get the warren on the board to try and think if that could help us in any way. I don't think it will. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. All right. We're really uh, getting close here. Let's see what we can get. Golden Pelt. Um, Pronghorn will take out these two. And excess damage will go to the Stoat. So that'll be good. Alright, good. I think that we're going to win this one now. Alright, you may concede. But that doesn't mean I'm done with you, bud. We're going to get our damage and continue on. 
I've made those teeth after making us use the hook. Another rabbit pelt. I got a lot of trading to do. Oh, no excess. I got so close to it though. Alright, time to trade. Ooh, another flying ant. I am going for an insect run, but there is a mantis too, so let's get that to supplement things. Oh, and a geck. Great. Um, man, now I wish I didn't put the unkillable sigil on the other stuff, because having a geck would have been amazing. Um, I think that I'll stick with the worthy sacrifice, and I will... Let's see. I'm trying to think if I want a different sigil head or body. I think I'll just take this and we'll stick with this combination for now. I don't know if we can buy the knife from him. That might be what it's for, actually. I think you may be right because that was something you could stab out your eye, right? Um, so, yeah. Good point. I have to try that out. Ah, oh, unfortunately, I had to do this. Okay, let's keep rolling. Yeah, I'll definitely try buying it, because that would be great. Let's see, what can we get down? I think our Gek could be sent in to take out the Coyote here in a minute. Um, what can we do? Definitely am concerned about that Coyote coming over. I feel like well, I could get the uh, pronghorn on the board and it could take out the coyote with the help of the geck being a sacrifice. Um, or the wild bull could come in and get him after a turn. Let's do the pronghorn though because that'll get enough damage on the board to uh, be worth it. Oh. And of course the pronghorn moves too. I should have remembered that. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to have enough damage though that it's going to go to the second phase anyways. So that's okay. We at least got some damage done on the uh, pack mule as well. Okay. The wild bull can come into play now. And I think it's safe to put it here. Um, so we'll get the cards in the pack. Okay. Ah, the Corpus Maggots came out to play. So, let's see. What can we do against this Bloodhound? I suppose we could try doing the mirror with it. Or we could get the raven on the board. However, we know that this guy is going to move around and it's airborne, so we should probably focus on getting it off of the board, I'd say. Um, so let's do it with this. And we will continue forward. Okay. Raven can come in. Um, how much damage are we at? We're dead even, it looks like. So, the Raven were to show up. The Bloodhound is just going to come in and be a problem right away. Um, it's not a good situation to be in. 
But we get the damage on the board, so I guess let's try for it. Okay. I think we may get just enough damage that we'll be able to make it out of this um, with the win. Woo! We got it. I really wasn't sure on that one. That was hard. Everything's harder with totems, you know? Ah, an imposter pack rat. And a long elk and a douse. I guess we'll go with the imposter. <laughs> Thank you. That's a hard fight. All right. Time to see what kind of card we can get here. A mud turtle. That's a new one. The adamantine mud turtle. Its shell can stop any attack once. Well, that sounds really nice, actually. Um, whoa, why is this red now? I guess because it's a... Um, let's see, did the imposter do that? I think it may have. Because I don't see it in my hand now. Well, that's fascinating. I wonder if it'll stay that way. Um, so we can possibly go there and do a sigil swap. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, or we could get, um, some items, which I am down to just one. So I feel a little bit, um, concerned about being with just one item. However, let's see, this is a sacrifice up here. I do need to go trade my teeth for some pelts. This is a hard decision. Uh, Mantis's power on something else, perhaps. Sounds interesting. Oh, it's every time I look at the cards, it changes its form. That's interesting. See how it's changing every time I scroll up, or most of the time? <laughs> That's cool. So, hmm. I think I'll go with Sacrifice and we'll put the Bifurcated Strike on some stronger card, like maybe the Flying Ant or something. Um, let's see. It won't let me do it though. That's the only problem here. So I might need to switch out for something else. In fact, I think I will. I'd like to put the Warren ability on the Ant Queen so that I could play the Ant Runaway. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it, that uh, Red Eye card just swaps its uh, looks every so often. And I think it's really neat that they put in that little detail to uh, add to the magic of this. I just love like seeing all the new things as I play. Um, every match is just a little bit different than the last, it seems. Oh, a beehive. That would be great to get a bee in my hand. And a rattler that's going to get stronger, so that's kind of a big threat. Um, I could play this mantis and get the ant queen down. And then um, get a ant but however that rattler is going to be a problem so we'll stick with this for the moment and then we'll sacrifice for the ant queen or the wild bull here in our next turn i think actually keeping the mantis where it is may be the best idea because it'll take out the rattler and then it can take out the adder as well um how much damage did they get on us though i think plus one We'll take out the Rattler and Adder will get them to another plus one overall, I think. So we'll keep going. Still in a good spot because that Skink will uh, run away. And I think we have enough here now that I can get the Ant Queen down and the Red Bull, or the Red Bull, the Wild Bull and uh keep going 
So let's uh, let's do this. We'll go something like this, and if we get the worker ant down, it can do two damage and take out that column. Um, so I think that I would rather do that, or I could go for the wild bull, and it would rampage through here and eventually make it to the adder. Um, so let's do this. That's a higher value target. Excellent. And there goes our mantis. But the wild bull should generate um, a bee for us and get rid of the adder and the beehive. Okay. Um, let's see about getting our worker ant down so that we can take out the rattler while we still have a chance. A strong one. Okay, good. That skink is going to get hit by the bull and run away. Um, it will take out its tail most likely. Oh, and a skunk. So, and then B is a worthy sacrifice. So, we're going to get plus four overall. And that wriggling tail is in the back. Um, I don't think putting the bee down right now just so we can play a skunk makes the most sense, so we'll just hold off for now. There we go. Alright, what do we get here? A geck. Excellent. So, I think we can quite literally just play the geck and wait a minute or two and maybe we'll have a strong card come up. Okay, strong bat. Um... So, let's see, let's replace this so we can play our, our bat, and that'll give us some good excess damage. Which is nice, because I think that we are about to go trade in our teeth for some pelts. Um, we got to do a sacrifice or a wood carver, and uh, this bat is strong enough, it might be worth getting a token. I'm not sure what I would want to sacrifice for, though. Alright, yeah, I'll try getting the knife. That'd be great if it works. Um, let's see, how do I get it? Oh, it doesn't seem to let me scroll up. I guess that I could only... Oh, wait, can I do it here? You can. Nice. Okay. I still have enough to get a golden pelt, and uh, that's it. So yeah, you can buy the knife. I had no idea you could do that. That's hilarious that I... I never thought to try it. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion. That's really cool. Uh, let's see. Wood carver or a sacrifice of some sort. Tempted to let the skunk go so that we can have a bone token. Um, I think I'll do that. Having that one bone token can mean difference between getting our bat out in a reasonable amount of time and not being able to, so I think that we'll do it. Alright, skunk. The knife, uh, I think it stabs your eyeball and it um, is kind of like the tooth pulling, but gives you um, more on the board. I can't remember if it gives you a full five teeth on the scale, but it, it definitely contributes more than the teeth pulling does. Um, I'll try it out when we get to the final boss if we make it that far today. Alright, our flying ant, it's unkillable and also has fecundity. Um, I may put it in front of our other guy here just to uh, see if we can get it sacrificed. That'd be awesome. Okay, um, we can get us another flying ant on the board too, so let's uh, go for that. Cool. I think that overall we're about to win this because they're just not going to be able to get enough on the board I think before we start taking over. Um, 
but that mantis coming in, that's going to do one damage, and then two, and then three, four, so that'll be rough. I think that will break even overall on this turn. The next turn, I'll wipe out one of their mantises and we'll be in a better way using our uh, mud turtle. Go, go, mud turtle. I should take out this lane, so that'll be pretty big help. Oh, mud turtle lost its shell. <laughs> All right, an ant queen. Um, that's great. Don't think we'll need to use it still. We're, uh, I think, drawing cards at a pace that I'm pretty happy with so far. Let's see. I don't think I have any duplicates to merge. Um, a sigil swap. What could we do that would be interesting there? Possibly the mud turtles ability on something else. Um, like say the flying ant or maybe the mantis. I don't know. Um, I do need to trade in my pelts, I think. So that kind of draws me towards that part. But a cave opportunity is nice and getting to pick a specific um, animal is also nice. So what would we do if we did sacrifices? What would, or a sigil swap? I just don't really have enough that makes me happy about that. So perhaps I could save that towards the last because I think I also have I have two items right now. Um, that is a hard call. Let's let's do cave. Haven't been to one yet this time, so I think it's important to remember it. Sometimes there's really good ones to be had. Um, four power, two of a kind, or three sigils. I've got a lot of sigils, so I'm going to go with it. There we go. Right off the bat, the very first one. We had plenty of them for this one. Oh, stinky elk fawn that also has loose tail. That's fascinating. And a bloodhound with rabbit hole and hefty. And a bullfrog that would let us find any card we want. That's pretty tempting, actually. Um, between that and the stinky fawn, I think I'll go with the bullfrog. It's kind of a undervalued sigil, I think, is the ability to search through your deck whenever you need. Okay, uh, let's see. I guess I'll take maybe the... I don't really have any of these that are going to be ideal. Maybe we'll just take the bird head and we'll go back to where they sacrifice on the insect. All right, good, good. Ooh, okay. So we could sacrifice our mantis in order to get a longhorn going since it's been boosted. Um, that may even be our best bet. Um, we can start the pronghorn over here and it'll move over after and take out the mantis. So, hmm. Too bad the mantis doesn't have more health. It'd be nice if it could withstand the two of those. Um, that's okay. We will start something out like this, and we will put the pronghorn over here, and I think we'll be fine. Okay. And let's get another card out. What do we have? A squirrel, and we're about to have plus one. Oh, actually, we got one incoming and two, and the mantis is going to be gone. So I think we should break even with this one. Oh, I forgot about the wriggling tail, but that's okay. Pronghorn will take out the mantis and the bee in one hit. So. Now that we have a flying ant in the background, 
Um, I think I would like to take out that column. Um, Pronghorn is going to take out both of these lanes, so I'm going to take out that lane. And I think that we will be okay with that. Now I have enough. Um, there we go. Okay, a little bit different, I thought, because I forgot about that tell, but we're still on a great path. And I have enough bones, too, that I can put out a uh, bat if I get a chance. Ooh, this is getting uh, really close. So our wild bull is going to do three, and pronghorn is going to do two, so we'll get five. And then those will take us down to three. Um, Let's see, so they'll get five total, and then we're going to have, um, how much damage? We're actually going to lose our pronghorn, maybe. I'm not positive on the order of this, but let's, uh, I think it, we don't have really any other choice but to go ahead and play. I mean, I could use my knife, but I kind of hate to use it at this point. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And... Let's see, our mud turtle, um, pronghorn will take out these two and then move to safety. Wild bull will take out the bee. Cuckoo is going to do plus one and the bee will do another one. So that will bring us down, unfortunately. Um, now if I use this, I think I'll win or at least come close to it. So let's try it out. Ah, that was just one short, but that's all right. I think that'll buy us enough time to uh, affect it. I wish we could get rid of the broken egg. That's my main problem here right now. The uh, not being able to take something out is uh, pretty tough. So what would be a good idea here? Our mud turtle having two damage. Pronghorn can take out that lane. However, um, well, we will get rid of the cuckoo, so that's good. Let's just uh, play it and see what happens. Don't want to overthink it too much. Man, they are just playing some hard cards. Oh, good. We got our bat. This is what I've been needing pretty badly. There we go. This will really turn it around for us. Yep. Good. That's what I've been needing is that bat. That was a big turnaround there. Okay. Um, card duplication or items. I, I'm down to just the one item right now. Um, but I could do card duplication and make something really strong uh, with the fungus event. So I think I'll go down this way and um, think about it. Ah, corpse maggots. My favorite. <laughs> okay. Who may we want to duplicate? I mean, we could have another flying ant with Fraternity and Unkillable. Um, so that's always awesome. Could have another ant queen help us spawn ants. Um, but trying to think of what what might be our best route here. Um, could have a really strong mud turtle or could upgrade have two gex that we could play. Um, zero cost gex, I think maybe a good idea. So we'll do this and whether I have um, to combine them or something else, we'll see here in a second. Not sure I have anything else though, so I may just have like a really strong single geck. Let's see. Okay. So we'll have a strong single geck and that'll give me a card that I can, you know, get going um, whenever. And it's as strong as a wolf at zero cost. So that works well, pretty well, I think. Okay, I think this might be my final boss. Um, and it's the angler, so it's always a hard one. So let's see how it goes. Yep, 
Yeah, three two for zero cost is pretty awesome. I agree. Oh, a stinky raven is coming in. Hmm. Well, what can we do with the stinky raven? Um, fortunately, these two cards are going to move around. I really don't like that because of the bait buckets. Um, I'm tempted just to go ahead and gouge my eyeball out. So, um, matter of fact, I think I will go ahead and do it. So, oh, is this going to let me cut a card? That's fascinating. Well, that's different. I thought it was going to do the eyeball gouging. I wonder if that was a change. Um, either way, that kind of makes getting the pronghorn or something else out a lot more reasonable. Um, flying ant is unkillable. Um, I could park it in front of the bait bucket and I don't think it'll hurt anything. Um, and in fact, let's do it over here so I can play a squirrel in like a next turn and uh, go from there because he'll want to pull something over, I think. Yep. And or I could play nothing and let him have my flying in. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The eye thing gave you in the main game. I think it gave the um, access to the eyeball thing. But I thought in like buying it from the uh, the pelt tradesman that it would also let me do the same thing because I thought the eyeball went on the scales and gave you a lot of points. But maybe they changed that for this mode where it's not the same. Uh, let's see. I'd really like for him to pull over bait bucket. Um, so let's do getting the pronghorn on the board by, let's see. Hmm. I'm at a loss here. I think I'll do, let's see, flying ant could go down, it'll be unkillable, but it's just not going to put a whole lot of damage, it'll put four on the board, but that great white is going to be a problem, because it's going to do six when combined with the raven, really got to get rid of that raven, unfortunately. Hmm. I guess pronghorn makes the most sense though. Let's do... I shouldn't have played that. Oops. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have played that? Shouldn't have played that. Um, well, actually, I, I kind of needed to, I guess. So we'll do that, and then we'll get the pronghorn on the board by sacrificing this one. And placing it here. And we will have the rabbit pelt to pull up that bait bucket. And... I think that's it for now. Okay. Now the pronghorn should be able to take out the... Um, well, it won't be able to do damage on the Great White. That's the main problem with it. And this raven is stinky, so I'm having a problem with that now as well. Um, yeah, let's, let's see. How can we get out of this problem. I guess the smoke could be put down to block the damage from this guy for a turn. Um, we'll still have the problem with the raven being there. Can I get... I guess I could get a flying ant to do some damage. Um, and that might be okay. It might be just enough to work out. But let's see. We can do that and then get the wild bull, you know, started actually. Um, and that'll put more power overall going into things. So it'll put a timer on it because things are going to move along, but let's just try it out. 
Okay. Perhaps in one more turn, we'll put just enough damage on the board to uh, be in a good situation. And I uh, think I'm going to have to put the squirrel down so it'll pull back that um, great white that's being problematic. Oh, that was not the way I was hoping it would go. <laughs> well, uh, so he's going to target me again because of that shift. I had no idea it would uh, do that, so let's do this instead. Alright, come on, get your great wide out of my way. <laughs> no. Okay, I guess that's not how it's going to play. Is he still going to be looking for something to pull? I really don't know. Um, don't know if we'll be able to recover from this, so... I think that I want to have to do something like that so Pronghorn can maximize its potential. Oh, he is going to pull. Well, that's not good. Um, yeah. Now I could have six damage if I put them all down like right away. This is really kind of getting out there. Nine damage, so if he pulls it after my attack, I'll still get it. Alright, good. That gets us to phase two, so um, unfortunately we're going to have these bait buckets, and I don't think they can be activated um, by airborne, but let's put this down, and this is overwhelming firepower, so we should get all the excess damage here. Alright, excellent. That's 11 teeth. <laughs> Man, I actually feel pretty happy about that one. That was a uh, combination of good planning and good luck, I guess. Okay. An amoeba and a pack rat and a mole man. Hmm. Well, let's see. Do you have a pick for this one, wizard? Any of the three you think would be best? leaning somewhat towards yeah yeah that, that was the one I was going to say I, I don't get amoeba very often so I think I'll go for it so you're out of my mind alright cool um, so I don't think I have any items so unfortunately that feels like maybe the best thing to do um, sigil swap uh, I don't see much that would like want to auto deploy. I mean, even I don't even have a three blood right now, so I could do sigil swap or I could get items or I could trade in pelts. And right now I have um, just two pelts, so oh, that's a tough one. I think that items are going to be more important though, so let's hope we get good items. Okay, um, that's certainly an item. There we go. These are, I guess, decent enough to make a difference. We'll see. All right, here we go. It's going to be a tough one. It took me so long to get here with all these uh, totem fights taking extra time to think through. They were all so difficult. Oh no, the insects that get stronger, that's going to be tough, especially with all the amalgams that they like to play. Ooh, no bueno. Um, maybe put a smoke in front of it, and then Mole Man has Mighty Leap too, so that's not good. Already we're at a little bit of a disadvantage. I could cut that card though, and that make it difference. I'm just wondering if it's enough though. Um, thank you for the encouragement. I'm really excited to uh, see how this goes. Um, so we did a snip. We could do smoke to have that taken down and 
we could play our flying ant, which would generate another one, um, and get us a little bit of damage on the board. So let's see here. What else could we do? I think that's it. Alright, now in comes the miner. So, corpse maggots deployed automatically to face off against the amalgam. Um, we could get flying ant down and that be enough damage to get us to phase two, I believe. Um, just barely, but I think it, it will work. So we'll go for it. And um, I think I think if we use this, it's 100% guaranteed. But let's see, two and two there, and we're definitely one tooth on the scale. So I think that I'm doing the math right. Let's go ahead and continue. I think that that'll get rid of the traitor. I'm not positive though. Okay, I think he may still be there. Yep, that's not good. Let's see. I guess we'll take a risk and check this card out. All right. Um, we will thinking about getting him to end his turn or skip his turn if that would make a difference or not. Um, the see he's gonna come in and solidify everything. Um, that is just not a good situation. I guess we'll get him to skip his turn. So let's get perhaps I have to ring the bell, but I'm trying to think of like what we may want to do. I guess we just gotta go with it. Alright, he passes. So this gives us um a squirrel and before we lose these guys and wondering if I should put a mantis down because we got this Louie character that's about to come in here and um, cause problems for us. The amalgam is going to get wiped out, but this Louie is going to be a problem. Because um, I could get a mantis sitting here to attack both ways, but our problem here with our guy is going to be a big one um, soon enough. So... Hmm. I guess let's just hold off and see what happens. I'm not feeling good about it though. Just losing three of our cards like that. It's going to be a hard hill to climb back up from. Thankfully, Louie is only one hit point though. That Sean is five. Oh, and we can't get rid of Louie either because of the waterborne. Um, that is tough. Okay. Um, what can we do? What can we do? It also has the touch of death, so that's just not good at all. It's a lot of power to uh, hold in one card, so we could block some of the damage with rabbit pelts, um, and could get us a flying ant down. Or perhaps a mantis. Um, but it's only going to get us that one attack, and I kind of like to save something for a worthy sacrifice in case we get the chance. So let's go like this for now and see what happens. Alright, angler time. Maybe we can pull the Sean card back since it's uh, a big threat. We'll uh, get something on the board. Both of these are just so bad with the kiss of death, or the touch of death, rather. I always want to call it kiss of death for some reason. <laughs> um, well, let's do this. We got an ant queen, so that's not bad. Um, I'd like to get either it or If we got a flying ant down, we could get the fecundity again and then put a rabbit pelt down. 
and we would get two damage on Reginald and unfortunately lose it, but we'll have the angler drag back the rest of this, so maybe it would be okay. Um, so Ant Queen does have more health, or less health, and it generates a warrant too. So let's do, um, let's do this, and then we will work on getting an Ant Queen going, and we will, oh, it's a Hydra Rock, excellent, so, um, that's great, now we can focus on putting out our rabbit pelt so it has something to drag, and I think we may be okay. Um, I could do this, and having everything be airborne for its attack power will get us into the next phase and hold us off from the uh, onslaught for a minute. Okay, and I think it's time for the moon. Okay, so let's see. Let's draw on one of these cards, Mud Turtle. All right. I think we're just going to have to see what happens here. Not a whole lot I can do with the lane being blocked. And an Ant Queen. So we could do, let's see, a Rabbit. It's a worthy sacrifice. So we can put down an Ant Queen, and that'll give us a Worker Ant. And in the next turn, we can put an Ant down. Okay. Let's uh, draw this, and could get us another flying ant, so let's do it. Okay. Good. Glad I grabbed the uh, shapeshifter card, because that was a big help. Thank you for encouraging me to use it. That has really been nice. Um, we can get another flying ant down, and um, I think that that'll be basically it. We're going to definitely over damage with that on the board. Okay. There we go. Oh, I don't know about the squirrel. Um, I just saw your message, but I don't know what would happen. That would be really interesting to see. And we had a victory. Awesome. Um, 167 cards drawn, 16 scales damage in one turn. That was a nice one. 53 squirrels harm, 68 sacrifices made, and 16 misplays. Entry number four. I scoured the disc la last night looking for some kind of explanation. And I found some really wild stuff. It made me think, what is the old data and why does Leshy only talk about it when he's wearing the woodcarver's mask? I found some log from Mr. Kaminsky. It was pretty clear when I met him that the guy had issues, but he seemed to be saying in this log that the entire development of inscription was a cover. For what? How infuriating, if true. Time to start another run, I guess. Sounds like Casey's getting hooked on the game. We unlocked a dire wolf, um, which will strike the opposing space an extra time when attacking, and a dire wolf pup at the end of the owner's turn, Direwolf Pup will generate one bone. Also, Direwolf Pup will grow into a more powerful form after one turn on the board. So, this one attacks um, the same spot in front of it twice. wonder what implications that could have. I mean, it's basically like a bifurcated attack, but in one spot, so it just doubles whatever in front of you. Interesting. It does have more HP than a regular wolf, too. Um, so I can see these being nice. No boss rares. Bosses award regular cards instead of rares. 15 challenge points. 
that's going to be a hard one. Okay. Well, I think that is it for today. So thanks for watching. This has been STR Rank. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter at STR Rank, and I'll have a replay of today's stream up on YouTube soon. Thanks. Have a good one.